Brian, Brian, stop the tape. Okay, Mike. Oh, wait, rewind that scene, please. Rewind that scene. Rewind that scene. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind that scene. Rewind that scene. I'm Mike Rizzo. And I'm Brian Bonds. And together we are Bobo Touch. Bobo Touch. Rewind that scene that podcast. Scene. A podcast <laughs> where we go back in time to all of our favorite cult classics from the 80s, 90s, and above and beyond. You know, one of my favorite things is that you say the same thing in the beginning of every episode. And it's for the <laughs> newcomers and for the old friends that know what you're about to hear because it's some goodness. Oh, and Riz, how you feeling today? Good, your goodness. I love it. Yes. It's good to it's good to have a goodness sandwich and a butt a cheek sandwich. sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, this is the ultimate cult classic movie, right? You can't get yes, more cult true. classic than Killer Clowns from Out of Space. 1988, baby. Holy Literally crap. shot in Santa Cruz on the same time and location as the Lost Boys. If you want to talk about 80s kinetic energy and a plate of silver cocaine, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> you got clowns, you got popcorn, you got aliens, you got fucking weird kind of like, like uh, what's it called? Cotton candy looking it's, shit. Clowns are us. Yeah. Cocoons, yeah, yeah, well, the <laughs> Cotton Candy Cocoons, dude. What an amazing movie, and and, and even some fun like crazy um, stop motion, oh yeah, shadow puppetry, uh, great props. The masks are amazing. This movie is great, and yeah, really like it made me like just it has such a thing. I don't know why, like really associate popcorn yeah <laughs> it'll popcorn oh. <laughs> well again well again let's talk about when we first watched this on what a vhs again at, yeah, you know man. in your mom's apartment right yeah, yeah and, we and were, the, uh, the the pure joy that we got from this movie yeah it's beautiful yeah, it's, it, it really is a, a a great score and um <laughs> like definitely scary vibes um and uh it's 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 really like a unique love story the like dating shit and then it just becomes like an ex-boyfriend and the new <laughs> boyfriend and the and the, it's very weird like a date gone wrong because yes. of an a, an alien attack from clowns from outer space yes yes and then they kind of like wreak havoc throughout the whole town so if you haven't seen this you have to see it everyone who's listening this is a must watch directed by the kyoto brothers who are fantastic the best thing is, you know, on the DVD, there's some great childhood fi like films they did. Oh, that, yes, that, yes, you know, yes. Really special stuff. And also major respect because the fellow New York is from the Bronx. Oh, yes, they're from the Bronx. <laughs> yes. We love fellow New Yorkers. Look at Brian. Yeah. That's a New Yorker face. I could do a New Yorker face. So, I could do a New Yorker talk. <laughs> yeah. Coffee talk. But Dude, I mean, I'm yeah, there were just so many, so many elements, <laughs> right? I can't even, I mean, I don't even know, like, well, there's one the thing that I dogged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was also like the ones, the one scene that I love, like when they first discover the road, and it's like their back shot, and you hear the music, the theme song, like that that they keep playing, like dun 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 dun, yeah. and then it's just like them yeah. like about to enter the town. Just some oh, like so fucking good. golden moments, like the moment with the pies. Yeah, um, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I also love you when they they. they like deliver the pizza and like then the baby one comes out. Yes. You know, and like, and like, <laughs> yes. Shorty, and let's yeah. just, and like, what, what, who's your favorite? Who's your favorite alien in this? You know, I I, I do like the little one. Yeah, but I, also I like think the, so too. I like the I also like the big dump one too. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. big dump is great. Yeah, an amazing waddling guy. I love now. the like waddling those, those dump. Actors. I I can't believe like. For for those types of masks, like having like kids in that like restaurant scene where like the kid is like you know the one is like acting like it's a, like a game like yeah. a statue and the, and it's so crazy like what 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 it must have been like on set you know <laughs> it's, it's creepy and the ending is nuts man it's oh so my god like, it's so great yeah and even that that scene with the motorcycle like when the one guy is like alongside the car. But it's like it's like it's like really bad compositing, but it's also like amazing. <laughs> his, his and then he just kills yeah. the guy. Like, oh my god, dude! Just so many good little reveals that just like, oh my god, pure happiness, man, pure happiness. A lot, a lot of deaths happen yeah. in this movie, and I'm glad um, <laughs> that Mike Tobacco doesn't die. You know? So, and, and on that note, let's bring on Mike Tobacco. How did you land this film 
And, you know, what was your, like, initial thoughts, like, what, what you, when you read the script? Like, I, I imagine the whole I, premise in general was, you know, very unique and interesting. Yeah, it was, you know, it was totally trippy. Uh, ironically, my part, uh, Mike Tobacco was actually the name of their best friend who was kind of like the guy that was, he hung out with a couple of the guys that were the Terenzi brothers, you know what I mean? And we're always getting into trouble and blah, 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 blah. So they kind of patterned my part after, uh, you know, their, their, their buddy that they grew up with, Mike Tobacco, which is like a classic name. You know what I mean? It's yeah. almost hard to believe that somebody actually has a name that's Mike Tobacco, right? But that is their friend. I totally thought it was made up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd think. So, you know, at the time I was... Uh, I was doing a, a soap opera. I was, I was leaving. I was just leaving The Young and the Restless, um, where I'd, you know, been on for a couple of years, and I'd played this kind of psycho villain dude that, you know, had fucked up all the characters on the show. And I really was wanted to do a movie. I basically had gotten two scripts to read, two scripts that people wanted me for, and one of them was back at that time. There was, you know, there was a lot of those kind of you know, low budget wannabe John and Claude Van Damme movies, like all the, the American Ninja, Michael Dudikoff movies. And somebody had offered me one of those, but it was like really formulaic. You know, you, you kind of know exactly what those things are going to be. And at the time they were shooting a lot of movies in South Africa because it was still apartheid. And, and th that was the way they got their money out. So a lot of people were getting jobs, and getting their movies made by shooting in South Africa, right? Because, you know, everybody had kind of blockaded them but so making movies was a way to to move their money and uh and then i got this movie i just read it and i was like you know you have to kind of like read it and read it again and you're like this movie is just crazy right this is not like anything this is definitely not a formulaic um you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is something like totally, you know, wild. Next level. Yeah. It read like somebody had almost written a movie to become a cult movie. Ah, uh, love that. We had a sense that the movie could blow up, but you know, when you're thinking about cult movie, it's it's kind of hard to really predict that because you know, cult movie by the nature of being a cult movie doesn't become a cult movie. You know, it has to like not be as successful as it could be when it comes out, you know, so that it can build up an audience and eventually become a cult movie. So it actually did. It became the quintessential, uh, you know, it became like literally a quintessential cult, cult movie. Right. It was like yeah. it being lit, like today, especially with the, you know, the video game and the merchandising and the Halloween costumes and the Halloween Horror Nights and all that kind of stuff has kind of even blown it up to another level where it's pretty cool to be able to see, like I have a seven-year-old son, you know, to have him bringing stuff from school from second grade that, you know, the, their grandparents had loved killer clowns and then the dads had loved killer clowns. And now like, you know, it's literally second and third generation yeah. people are falling in love with killer clowns. So I think it was definitely the right choice to make because it's pretty cool being involved with a, a movie that is, even though, even though it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not like being involved with avatar or something like that. It's got a very unique kind of audience, yeah. but you know, a movie that has stood the test of time and that people love and, um, you know, when I first got asked to go to, to go do conventions to, you know, this auto, you know, the crazy convention signing autographs and stuff, I'm like, oh man, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I went to one and I was like, holy shit, these people are loving this movie and you couldn't help yeah, yeah. but That was but us. Love, yeah, you couldn't help but not <laughs> fall in love with it like all over again, right? Because it's like, wow, people start coming in and it's like, look at my tattoo and look at my this and my kid just got this ray gun and you're like, wow, I'm, I'm involved with something that you know, a lot of yeah. people have got a lot of fun, a lot of enjoyment out of it. Connection to, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Let's talk about that, what like cool. that that intro circus scene when you when you and um Suzanne Snyder went in. Like, how was that? Like, it was it a set? Like, how was that shot exactly? Like, what? Like, br break it down for us. Like that that scene, which so many people ask me about, and I thought that was going to be the movie that exposed yeah. me as being a complete fraud as an actor, <laughs> because I must have blown my lines on that scene, like. 
a hundred times to the, you guys ever see a, see a movie with Albert Brooks called Broadcast? I, I yeah, think so. back in the day, yeah. This great flop, flop sweat scene where he finally gets the chance to be, a, to be an anchor person, and but he gets flop sweat. And pretty soon, yeah. <laughs> bringing in towels. And it's just like a freaking... I felt like that, right? You know, when you're an actor and you're, and you're kind of blowing a scene, you know, you just feel like the, the most massive embarrassment because, you know, every, there's 100 people there and they're all focused on you and you're supposed to be pulling it off. And I just felt like, oh, I'm just destroying this movie. I kept love blowing my lines and now I'm getting nervous. Now I'm feeling like, you know, I'm sweating. You know, of course, you see it and you go, oh, it's great. It's fine, right? That's the movie. The, the, half, half the lines I say in that, people go, well, you write down that line. It's like the, you know, <laughs> it's like the Incredible <laughs> Service. Clowns are us. Yeah. And all that <laughs> yeah, the Clowns are us is great. Ironically, all the stuff that was shot inside the spaceship, yeah. um, that stuff kind of took the longest to get ready. Mm -hmm. So we were, we shot the whole movie up in the Santa Cruz area. You know, they just finished shooting Lost Boys up there and all that stuff. And there's all nice. redwoods. You know, we, we shot actually down there at the same, you know, the Lynn Lost Boys where they have that, you know, that's the Santa Cruz kind of carnival Beautiful. down there. You know what I mean? Yeah, on the, I've been on the, there before. So yeah. that's the Beautiful. same one we, we kind of shot at the end of the movie and all that kind of stuff. And But we shot that movie for six weeks, all night shoots. Mm because the whole movie takes place in one night, right? So it's, it's not like you have any yeah. sort of, you know, you know, oh, well, tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. And, but the whole time we would drop by this warehouse that they had basically just kind of, there was no movie studio in Santa Cruz. So they basically found a, an empty warehouse and they just started building. All of that stuff was, you know, they were, you know, we would go in there at the beginning and they were just putting up all of the walls and the plywood and painting it. And so we kept on dropping by and it was, it was pretty cool. And then we shot all of the exteriors while they were building that. And so I think it was the last week or two weeks of the whole movie that we shot actually on the, the stage there. And so it, it, it was pretty cool because it was the beginning of the movie, but, but it was real, really we shot it at the end and we'd mm. been anticipating it and looking forward to it. And of course, you know, we we're all like little kids. We wanted to get in the ballroom and the, uh, <laughs> you know, just all the fun, crazy, goofy stuff. <laughs> yeah. We wanted to get in there as much as anybody else would want to. Wow. That's amazing. You know, in general, too, you know, one scene that really, not to get heated, but like, uh, you know, the... Uh, the cop scene with Susan's prick ex-boyfriend <laughs> just gets me heated, man. You know, <laughs> you know, did you want to knock that guy out? Yeah, you know, a little you know, blonde guy is like, great. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah, no, totally, totally. And uh, The rival. And, I mean, the funny thing was is that, you know, you, you hear about you hear about actors that kind of, like, bring their, you know, the stuff from their character to the offstage as well. And you wouldn't think about that happening in a movie like Killer Clowns, right? You <laughs> yeah. think, oh, everybody's just going to think, oh, this is fun, and they're going to show up and have a good time, right? Yeah, yeah. But you know how his character is just like really, really that you know overly serious, yeah, almost like, like a, very... almost like a comic book Dudley Do Right or something, right? <laughs> um, well, he actually showed up with that exact attitude. You know, with me, I'd go and shoot a scene and it'd be over. But we'd finish the scene and he'd put his arm around Suzanne and kind of go <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? It was like he, was, he, carried, he carried it over the whole movie. You know, I loved working with Suzanne and everybody else in the entire movie. But because he was, you know, bringing that, that attitude, you know, yes, I just, you know, it, it made it really easy to... <laughs> <laughs> all the roll, all, all the eye rolls and, and like who is this dude we're pretty he's easy like, to do. he's like going method he's like going method on you <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a believer of it's called acting folks do you know what i mean it's a, and we're making yeah. a movie called killer clown so if you can't just yeah. kind of show up and turn it on then exactly it's not it's, exactly. it's not last of the mohicans you know with daniel yeah. they live yeah. with his, yeah. his musket right yeah yeah exactly yeah <laughs> He's showing up flexing, and it really is just like <laughs> it's such a special script. And he, 
He's such a dipshit too, you know? Yeah, he really yeah. is. Tell you a true story. John's really the, also the only person, I think maybe he wants to start doing some cons and stuff like that, but he's really like the only person involved with the movie that has just never stayed in touch with or been to a con or doesn't show up to any of the screenings. And everybody else has become like really a bonded family. Um, you know, Suzanne's, Suzanne's like my sister. I mean, probably one of my two or three closest girlfriends. And, you know, wow. and like we nice. stayed at their house over the summer in Georgia. And um, so we're really close. And the Kyoto's are really close. And even the guys that were yeah. in the clown suits, we've stayed in really good. We stayed really good friends. But um, he hasn't really been much in contact with anybody. We were all there about a week ahead of time for rehearsal. And, uh, you know, they wanted us to get up there and get to know each other and read through the script with the director and, and acclimate ourselves and just kind of bond before we started shooting the movie. So we had gotten up there, you know, like the day before, and then we'd met with Stephen Kyoto and we'd all read through the script and he'd given us some things he wants us to think about and blah, blah, blah. And it was a Saturday mm -hmm. afternoon. We'd say, ah, let's go see a movie. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love this. We're getting in. He goes, I'll drive, right? And we're getting in the car. And I said, it, it, it's kind of cold, you guys. I said, I'm just going to grab my jacket real quick. And he's like, the movie's going to start. And I'm like, yeah, listen, but I don't want to be, you know, kind of freezing the whole time, right? There's, tra there's trailers and stuff. So I'm going to run in my room and grab my jacket. So I run to my room, I get my jacket, and I come back to the car. I put my hand on the, the door handle to open it up. And he <laughs> stepped on the gas and burned out of the. The, uh, Holy shit. <laughs> and of course, like at this point, I'm just thinking it's, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm just, you know, a guy, right? So I'm thinking <laughs> this is where he comes back around and like laughing his ass off and like, you know, that's for real, didn't you? <laughs> no, he went to the movie. <laughs> ah. I'm sitting there for 10 minutes in the, in the parking lot until I realized. Wow. And then, you know, there's not even really any cell phones or anything back then, right? right so if somebody right. left, you couldn't even call them and go, what the fuck? <laughs> right? Yeah. So they all oh, went up to see the movie, and I just was like standing there in the parking lot holding my jacket, right? I guess I'll go watch something on the tube in my room. Yeah, wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, when the clowns tried to kill Debbie real quick. Oh, man. Uh, what was that like? I mean, you're fighting off 20 clowns and nowhere to go and an ice cream truck on fire. What was going through your mind, man? Uh, <laughs> just, be, you know, just crazy. I mean, literally, literally, you know, Suzanne and I were just constantly psyching ourselves up. Yeah. Um, you, know, you know, we'd be, you know, depending on what it was, be running in place and huffing and puffing and doing whatever we can. So when they said, actually, we, we could turn you and go, we just were we constantly and then you know of course the kyoto brothers were always standing there and yeah and uh and going you can't be too big right it's the clouds they're coming and waving stuff in the air and if, you know pretty soon you just you get kind of used to being able to act revved up okay yeah did you get to did you get to wear a mask at all and like try it you know, I think I did. I'm pretty sure I put them on. By the way, like that was when they started making those masks and stuff. I don't know. I mean, six months. As soon as we found out we were doing the movie, I think we all went to their studio and saw where they were, you know, sculpting them all and stuff like mm -hmm. that. That was pretty cool, too. They're kind of old fashioned, practical special effects, like, yeah, miniature, you know, special effects yeah. makeup, stop yeah, motion. Yeah. It was pretty cool just watching all of this stuff come to life. So I'm sure we did. I'm sure I stuck on a couple of the masks and <laughs> and uh, I'm sure I stuck I on a couple. You maybe, know, maybe they were they one. were they were thick. They were like, I, geez, I wish I had one. Yeah, I was gonna say it looks really heavy and really like hard to breathe. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Thick yeah the guys. The yeah. guys. The guys that here. I'll show you something. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Yeah, oh my I knew goodness. it. Holy I knew you shit. had it. Yes. Oh my goodness. That's my favorite one. <laughs> yes. Holy shit. That what I would have been. It'd be a lot easier to wear this one, right? That's Brian's favorite little guy. That's the little one, right? 
Yeah, I love it's it when he comes. To wear that one. <laughs> when he comes out of the pizza box or he's the little or the doorbell. Oh my god, I can't believe you got that. I was not expecting that. Holy shit! See, <laughs> Brian loves the way he waddles. He has a great little waddle oh, with his butt. It. I love the yeah. waddle. Yeah, that's his, yeah. We we called that we called him Shorty. And he was yeah, always sure. my favorite. He was always my favorite one. You know, like the knock my block off scene. Like, yeah, 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 that's the one. Yeah. I was probably- <laughs> and then, and of course, like he shoots you know, his head right out. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful so scene, one man. Other, one of my other favorite scenes was like, "What are you gonna do with those pies, boys?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That one, that um, guy was just like a local actor they found up there, and I still tell everybody I go his delivery of that line is still my favorite del- line in the whole movie. By the way, that was a really fun scene to shoot because those pies that go flying and, and melt the melt it, that car. Yeah, everybody that wasn't holding a camera or holding a light was holding a pie standing next to the camera. Oh. You know, waiting for them to say action, and then we oh, all boom. Ah! Yes. Wow, that's badass. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's so cool. That was the vibe of making that movie. You know what I mean? It was all Love practical. It. it was all everybody jump in. Let's figure out how to get this thing done. And if something didn't work and made a mistake, we just had to figure out how to make it work for the movie. And that's that's great, man. There's nothing like that anymore, man. That's so organic and great, you know. Yeah. Nowadays, you know, you're looking, best. you're looking at a green screen or something, and they're yeah. painting everything in afterwards, right? Right, right. I I hear you on that, and you know, we don't want to take too much of your time, but we have one more question. You know? Oh yeah, no worries. Yeah. You know, what was it like uh, seeing the movie at the premiere? Yeah. And the reaction, like sort of, it was sort of like the post side of the after the whole production side of it, like when it was out, like what was that like too? Yeah. And for also, you. I love that you have an acoustic guitar back there. Totally. Oh, thank you. Have you guys seen that little Ed Sheeran? There's a little YouTube video. It's actually just even a short where he's he's doing an interview somewhere and he says, uh, yeah, you know, I can play any song, any song, any pop song. You, you tell me any pop song in the top 40 right now and I can play it with four chords. These four oh. chords. Boom, 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 boom. They're like, what? And he's like, yeah, any song, name it. Like now, first of all, I'm just surprised that he knows any song in the top forty, right? right. You know, yeah, yeah, I would, yeah. if I was Ed Sheeran, yeah, I'd probably yeah. know at my Ed Sheeran songs, and I barely listen to anything yeah. else, right? But he knows. Yeah. He's like, just name a song. That's insane. They name yeah. a song. And he goes, and they're like, what? Name another one. And then he goes, well, something off of there, you know? Do they name like a Beatles song? He goes, all the same four chords. You know, if you're yeah. that good, then you only really need four chords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You transpose it's anything true. with those four That's chords. Right? Yeah. yeah. Is there anything you want to like promote about uh, something that you're working on? Or I know you have like a pretty awesome like you know uh, media company too. Um, yeah, you yeah. Wanna... And, well, it, I don't know if you can see it's probably gotten a little dark, but um, there's a movie that I did right before the pandemic, which I thought you guys, if you haven't seen it, it's pretty cool called Willy, Will, Willy's Wonderland. My day job basically is now is I, I only act a little bit, you know, from time to time. I'm, you know, I'm always developing my new movie to produce. So that was yeah. one that I produced and I did two rewrites of the script and I have a song actually that I wrote and sang on in the soundtrack and Nice. And uh, I directed second unit and I did, you know, it's like kind of I did almost everything. And, and I play the, I play the killer who possesses the animatronics that Nicholas Cage is battling. And it's kind of a yes. Friday, it's kind of a five so nights cool. of Friday's vibe. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got this um, movie they're supposed to be shooting over the summer. That's a crime thriller that I'm, that I'm producing called Neponset Circle starring Guy Pierce. Nice. You know, you guys oh, know who Guy yeah. Pierce is? Oh, yeah, Guy yeah. Pierce is great. Then another kind of cool, like almost like no country for old men. Uh, you know, kind of cool, gritty, stolen gold and a killer out of jail and all that kind of thing <laughs> called El Dorado that I'm hoping that, uh, to do right after that. So, nice. um, so, so cool. you know, obviously everything, ha- you have to have a lot of pieces fall in place, but, um, yeah, yeah. Hopefully they all will. Grant, thank you so much. That was amazing. Oh my God. <sighs> I love this that man. Great, man. What a great guy. What a cool dude. Yes. You know, I don't say this. But I do think about this, especially when the episodes are out, that it's crazy we're even talking to these yes, people. Yes, I and, know. And also that some of these people um, have so much uh, happiness. And I feel Grant really <laughs> walked away with such a happy experience. And he's connected, you know, um, with the Kyoto brothers. Yeah. And, uh, 
and, and he's still Suzanne. friends with Suzanne. It's good. It's good to know too that Dave Hansen hasn't let go of his ex girlfriend. He's still holding on to the ex. I, I think uh, it seemed like uh, he, you know he was really on in character, you know, and then off camera as well, yeah. and uh, probably really tapped into the t- uh, cop persona. With yeah, Suzanne. he became a cop himself after the movie. I hope John Allen Nelson is doing well. Yeah, no, we miss him too, man. It'd be great to see him one day. Yeah, he's a good dad, dad. And it's great to know that the little one's called Shorty, dude. The little I know, one. I love Shorty. I love, I love Shorty. Shorty. I can't uh, believe he had the mask. Yeah. I also love that he's a fellow daddy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's all about parents tonight, the killer clown daddies. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think every parent in America and in the world, every parent in the world should be a killer clown from outer space for Halloween. Oh, my God. Yes, yeah, so that's also a good test to see if your kid is cool, if they if they really dig the mask. I, I'm surprised they, I mean, they made an amazing video game that just dropped, but... I'm surprised after all these years with the cult following um, that there hasn't been a a sequel, but hey, you never know. Yeah, right, right. And I know there's a lot of uh, really cool replicas of the mask that people show up to the conventions. I think if this movie, you know, um, was made today, we would be the ice cream brothers. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Dude, that's the role we need. We are totally (laughs) meant for that role. Yeah, they look like <laughs> two dudes from the Bronx that were actually doing it. Like, yeah, I'm over here actually. He's like, <laughs> yeah, ice cream's yeah. gonna melt. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, isn't that yeah. one of their yo? Isn't that one of their concerns as like all the shit is going down? He's like, the ice cream's gonna melt. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. <laughs> like product, product <laughs> is more important than dying by yeah. an alien clown. I don't know how scripts like this get across the desk and get funding, but I'm glad it did. Oh and, my god, I'm so and, glad uh, this movie exists. Um, yeah, I mean, again, yeah. like we just watched this when we were kids, and it just—it's just something that we always, we always reference and we always talk about it. Uh, we had a few of the masks, right, or like, or yeah. copies of the masks. But yeah, the Chiodo brothers, man, like you know, major props uh, to them because uh, uh, I think this film wouldn't be as successful, and of course with the the actors, but really with their vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, seriously, and also. Um, Check out more on Grant. He has a great, um, like, full oh, service yeah, media company called Global Pictures Media. Yeah. Check him out. They do a lot of he's, big, high end movies. So, yeah, he's uh, produced he's, some really great yeah, films. Yeah, he's producing that you a lot of things there. Seen. Yeah, so, um, definitely. Keep a lookout for him. I think everybody needs to uh, watch this film yes. and, and take a g- good spirit away from it. Like, either have silly silly fun go to a carnival after you watch it or yes. uh, eat some popcorn or, <laughs> or or go make a monster movie with yeah. your friends and i also think this is a great movie to watch if you're scared of clowns or scared of pennywise because it really as ugly as the clowns look it's ridiculous so yes yes uh, for those those who fear clowns out there bobo well, and the chiodo brothers got you monster movies are the way to go <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so monster somewhere. movies are the way the segue into comedy exactly <laughs> and now that's why all the comedy directors are making horror movies <laughs> yes yes uh, if you it. haven't seen this definitely watch it and uh, check us out on social media at Bobo Touch on all the platforms we have a web series called Bobo Touch Helpline we do music we do comedy and sketches and uh, thank you so much for listening and watching guys this has been a fantastic you. one. We appreciate you guys so much. And a lot more to come. It's true. Bye. Enjoy. Have a good day. You too. <laughs>